gonna be the week. Oh, okay, guys. This is gonna be the week five day one Team Liquid versus CLG game. I have not seen weeks three and four, so looking forward to seeing how TL has improved or done anything in the uh, the time that I have not watched. So. Looking at Team Liquid last, I, I've called them basically the KT of NA. Um, in the sense that, on paper, pound for pound, they're really strong. But they seem to have the same exact issues that hold KT back as a team. And hopefully we'll see if uh, any of those type of things have been cleaned up a little bit. CLG is a team that um, two weeks ago, you know, I was saying they were the ninth best team in NA, and I didn't think that they actually had uh, a much bigger ceiling to ascend to. So, we'll see how this game ends up unfolding. The bans are really, really weird. Uh, in particular, Zoe left open. Uh, Cog is left open. I, I don't think that the Cog ban is as dramatic as people are thinking. I still think Cog is insane. Varus, however, was picked up by TL, so... Not a bad champion by any means. They also got a hold of Galio, and they got a hold of Camille. Now, the Camille is able to be flexed, which is really, really nice. She can go up to top lane. She can also go into the jungle, and CLG has to respect that going into the second ban phase. So, we'll see what ends up happening. The Zoe pick is obviously something that's super, super obnoxious. She doesn't really care who she's up against in mid. Yeah, and you can see that they don't actually know if the Camille is going to be a flex, so a Kha'Zix ban ends up coming out. And first pick uh, by TL post-second banning is Alistar, so it's still keeping the Camille a secret on what they want to do with her. Zach picked up by CLG. So mid lane can get quite scary, and if there's going to be one way to shut down... The Zoe, you know, you can definitely do so with Galio and Zach, or, <clears throat> or not, whatchamacallit. If there's going to be one way to completely shut down the Galio and just make him live a nightmare, it's going to be with the, the Zoe and the Zach, because it's going to be so rough to actually stay inside of the lane. Now, Jax ends up getting picked up here, and which is in interesting about this is that if you put Jax inside of the jungle, um, you actually have a lot of kill pressure, and you have a lot of playmaking potential on the left-hand side of the map. If you put Camille inside of the jungle, you still have all of that same kill pressure on the left-hand side of the map, but you have a little bit more versatility with being aggressive while crossing the river. And it's not to say that Jax can't duel or that Jax can't actually cross the river or something. He's not going to do it as well as Camille, and Camille can actually create a lot more opportunity for getting deeper vision in um, and coming in from different angles, if that's what you want to do. Um... So this is actually at Team Liquid's discretion where they want to put Camille and where they want to pick Jax if they end up locking in the Jax. And it looks like the Jax is actually going to be inside of the jungle. So we take a look at the team compositions. Obviously, the most notable thing that's going on is that Jax actually has an enormous amount of value on the left-hand side of the map. Okay, so when you think about his initial clear, does he need to be in mid lane early? No. Does he have the option to? Yes. Does he need to be in top lane early? No. Does he have the option to? Yes. Um, similarly, Zach actually could go to mid lane early, a little bit more difficult to actually go to top lane early. So this is obviously something that Team Liquid can take note of. The other thing about this is that Zach doesn't have as much value on his blue sand side of the jungle as, as he does on the right hand side of the map, because as long as Stixay and Biofrost can control the tri-rush down in bottom lane, this is likely to be the area where Team Liquid should realistically be weakest in terms of vision, and also they can play against that so long as Pole Belter is not 6, uh, and they don't have to respect any sort of like Galio plays or whatnot. So basically, Team Liquid could leave Double Lift and Ole on an island and only look to make plays in bottom lane once Pole Belter has been escorted. 2-6. So X Smithy, if he plays a uh, a left centric side of the map very early on, and then he just goes for basically vision um, around rates and uh, behind enemy blue buff, etc. Basically trying to asphyxiate Rainover on the Zac and just control the vision, escort his laners to six. 
That's the way that they could actually play it out and then look to make explosive plays using their ultimates. Rainover has a lot more luxury playing on the right-hand side of the map, using the Zac, uh, engages in mid lane, trying to snowball the Zoe, obviously applying a lot of pressure to the Varus and the Alistar, who are going to be, in theory, potentially left on an island, down in bottom. First Drake of the game is super, super, super important, but no matter what, Rainover should be looking to play this game with a, uh, a counter slash match gank style, just always staying on his side of the river, only using Elastic Slot from his side of the map, and just constantly keeping wards inside of the river, and then trying to play around the right-hand side and let things unfold that way. See, pretty standard opening. Not really too much to expect. Look at the initial opening, you can see X Smithy going for a full clear, and you can also see that Rainover, he has a little bit of a less efficient clear, um, but it, it's still going to get the job done. You can see that X Smithy identifying that even though he has potential to go top, potential to go mid, he's just going to do this route. And what this is going to do is it's going to completely shut down Rainover from being able to help out top lane, which we already talked about he's likely going to be unable to do anything with. And it's going to just make sure that Rainover doesn't come over here or try to do anything like this or yada yada yada, etc. Um, so what this is ending up doing is it's going to let, allow x Smithy to go into a power farming mode. And as long as Poe Belter fades any ganks early on, um, Jack should actually end up getting ahead of Zack temporarily. And then he can play the tempo advantage because it allows Jax to return back up to the top-hand side of the map around when top lane is going to be like level 5 or so, and this is not going to be a, a time period where Rainover wants to be allocating time to the left-hand side of the map, so he's going to be able to get advantages that way. And pay attention to Jax's route now at this point. You see he comes down, he sees that the Scuttle Crab has been taken. He's getting... Now, I really like the, the type of wards that they're using. These are very specific for hurting Zack. And you can see that even if Zack comes up into top lane, it's virtually impossible for him to do anything. So you really have to question, like, why is Rainover trying to devote time to any of this? And now he's just so far behind on tempo compared to X Smithy. TL is in a, a beautiful spot right now. You can see x Smithy pass back on to the top-hand side of the map, level 5. This is the perfect timing. Well, he had the option to. Instead, he ends up doing Wolves, and then rather than going immediately up to the top-hand side of the map and trying to get vision control, especially because this wave is going to crash into the turret, and this is something that Darshan wants to do. The other thing is that Darshan, even if he ends up getting 6, which this is the wave that you get 6 on, um, which, you know, for those of you that don't know, it's always the cannon wave. Um, he's going to end up losing his mega, so he's not going to have that available to him, and then impact with his ultimate. But instead, x Smithy is actually prioritizing coming out to this side of the map because he knows that this is actually where Ranover is forced to path into, and he ends up getting vision control. It's an option, and the reason I say that it's an option, it's, it's because basically TL know that he's forced to do this. They know exactly where he just came off the map because they just saw him a few moments ago. And now they end up wasting uh, Galio Ultimate. Makes no sense whatsoever.
Spell Belter doesn't have his ult available to him right now, which is really, really, really unfortunate. So I do think that Exmithy, while it was a choice to go into the right-hand side, you can know that he's there. It's using no information as information. And I think there was a little bit of opportunity loss because you definitely could have converted. You could you could have made something happen up in top lane with Paul Belter and yourself. Now they're going to capitalize on trying to get this Ocean Drake. 6A tried to go for the steal. Doesn't end up getting it. So now, right now, the, the game's in a lull state. So if Team Liquid's actually going to look to do anything, they should utilize it with Galio having his ultimate available. See, they have the Alistar. The problem is, is that trying to dive CLG in bottom, or I mean, if TL, yeah, trying to dive CLG in bottom lane is actually really, really hard against the Brahmin stuff. Really, really don't like that TL is taking such a slow approach. It's not necessarily that they lose out from a slow approach, it's just that they have so much more opportunity, given how far ahead they were at some points in this game. You can see they're just struggling to, to really find any cracks inside of CLG, but I don't think that it's really that excusable. Should be noted that, yes, Jax is really, really strong. Uh, Camille, really, really strong. Varus, really, really, really strong. The only thing that CLG actually have going for them is the Zoe. The Zoe is the only champion on their entire team that doesn't slow down. Every other champion is going to become a liability the longer that the game goes on. But the other thing about CLG's team composition is it's not really well suited for, for handling Galio ult and Camille plays. So it's a little bit uh, weird to see why TL are, are taking the game as slow as they are. Like right here. I mean, if Jax was actually just up in top lane and used the Galio ultimate, it doesn't even matter if Rainover just gets there, or you just force him off the turret entirely and just kill him. There's absolutely no way for CLG to respond to this as long as Team Liquid has priority. He gets away. You're never getting a kill onto Camille up in top unless you can bait her actually into committing first. Infernal Drake coming up now, 5 seconds, Team Liquid in perfect position to capitalize on this. They should actually just be able to get it for free. This is a, this is a really, really big nightmare for a CLG. I, I have no idea what they actually plan to do. Camille just gets so much value out of this to see the impact backing all the way up. He just wants to make sure he doesn't get cheesed by anything. Varus, Jax, and Camille, so much value out of the Infernal. Fortunately for CLG, an Ocean Drake is spawning next, and that's probably the, the best Drake that they could have hoped for. Cod Drake even would have been slightly better just for that Jax and the Camille. And now TL is going to capitalize on getting the Herald. Teleport coming in from Hui. This game is very, very, very boring in a lot of ways. I mean, basically, all that we're watching happen is 
TL's taking the game really slow, and CLG doesn't have the luxury to allow this to happen. CLG is constantly behind on tempo, almost no matter where they go. They're looking for a play onto Ole, they're never going to get anything there. The most that they get out of him is that he has to cast his ultimate. Um, you can see they're, they're late to arrive up in top lane. TL has the Rift Herald, they can utilize basically whenever they want. Baron's going to be coming up in two minutes. Camille, I, like, see this, like, Camille, what, what Impact's doing right now is really good. She should just actually stay around mid lane, and then you can actually bring Jax around mid lane, and then this brings Rain over out of the jungle, and then once Rain over's out of the jungle, you just cast the Herald, you get the mid lane turret, bring bottom, like, kind of what they're doing right now, but it could have been done cleaner. They end up getting the mid tier 1 turret, which is really big. Anytime that you're facing off against a utility, uh, a utility mage, that likes to stall and stagnate the game. Tier 1 mid turret is super, super important. Champions like Zoe, Talia, Victor, Azir, Zarath, Ori, anyone like that. Alright, so now TL is just getting vision, Drake's coming up, they should actually look to just capture that as soon as possible. Actually, waiting until, waiting until like 22 minutes would be ideal. Waiting until 22 minutes would be super, super ideal. Um, because then you can just guarantee that the next dragon spawns, you wait a little bit, you kill it, forces the elder dragon to spawn. And they're the ones that are in, you know, complete driver's seat. Mountain Drake actually spawning, so that's beautiful for Team Liquid. And now CLG has another problem, uh, you know, something else they actually have to respond to. You can see the CLG is actually not achieving anything. And here, here's the here's the problem uh, that CLG is having is Ezreal um, is about to hit his his peak spike, and then after that, it's all downhill from there. Rainover is basically already going downhill. The only thing they have going uphill for them right now is still the Zoe. Um, because even though Darshan can continue to get a little bit stronger, it is not nearly as impactful as impact getting bigger on that Camille. And when you when you factor in the Infernal Drake and stuff, things just get so out of control. And you can also see that Poe Belter is actually even going for um, a little bit of AP damage. And this is actually going to be really, really problematic for some of the members on CLG because you can see they have basically zero magic resistance. So even the Galio is actually going to be a pretty big threat and the Infernal Drake is going to play into that a little bit as well for him. Whereas normally it would just be for the Varus Jax and the Camille. So now, even though TL didn't actually do anything with the Galio ultimate, even though they didn't utilize it uh, as well as I think they could have in the early stages of the game, given the advantages that they had, they're in a state where they should just be content to let the game continuously just scale out, tap the lanes, make sure nothing can happen, use Galio to restrict any playmaking potential that CLG would try to look for, especially because Impact has teleport available. No team fight is actually going to unfold that TL shouldn't realistically be able to win off the back of a defensive Galio ult. I don't like that now they're trying to make plays happen and that they're fighting over needless vision. Everything that we're seeing happen right now is just basically fights over luxury vision. Even if CLG commits to mid and they want to get the mid tier one turret, it's not something that you need to really be concerned with. And also CLG doesn't have the best uh, Baron shredding comp. So just let impact continue to scale up a little bit more. X Smithy as well. Everything is just going completely fine for TL. Dragon's gonna come up in two minutes. They should honestly try to let it live a little longer. Now TL fighting over need decision. Team fight ends up breaking out for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And it's like let's just rewind, right? So let's look at the classic. Let's look at the KT Lolster. Here we go. So Drake's coming up in 40 seconds. Camille 
has a wave in bottom lane. You see that there's nothing going on in mid lane. You're under no obligation to get that 100 gold on top. Why aren't we just waiting a little bit? Why are we fighting over vision that doesn't matter? Why are we in a position where Zach can actually look to make something happen? That's great. That, that's just fantastic. And you know what? Hell, let's give him a Baron too. This, this is just great. Yeah, let's teleport in the Camille, but that's, this is good. This is, all right. Now, Impact just goes up to top lane, cleans up the wave, and then Double Lift should just be able to shove in mid. And I mean, okay, so CLG gets a lot of shit that in, that in a million years they never should have been able to get. They should never, ever be able to get these kills. This is, this is Team Liquid losing, not CLG winning. And Double Lift actually killing the mountain, if he just waited one more minute to kill it, it would have been so good, Elder would have spawned. So this is TL losing the game, not CLG winning the game. This is often how I basically said weeks ago and how it continues to seem to be true to me that CLG will win games. Is like opponents completely messing up. It's, it's not through anything that CLG is actually doing. All right, more team fights. This is great. All right, what, what are we fighting over right now, by the way? Okay, Impact was out. Impact was out. He, he was... 100% he was out. <laughs> the fight's over. The fight is 100% over. <laughs> what? What? Jesus. The Nayram. <laughs> the classic. <laughs> Someone get these teams a risk board game. Oh my god. Galio's split pushing in bottom. I mean, he has the teleport available. Darshan looks like he's actually going to take the red. That's not the worst. Ooh. Impact actually fails to steal. Well, that's a really cute one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, but he goes down anyway. So many needless fights. My god. Are they going to get Baron? Oh god. It's so bad. It's just so bad. Everything's just so bad. <laughs> oh my god. It's like it's like when you look at those art pieces that are worth like millions of dollars and you look at it and you're like, what am I looking at? You know what I mean? You know, you know the art pieces I'm talking about. You know? Like the hold on. Really? Hold on. Let, let me find it for you. I mean, okay, art is like subjective, right? In a way, but it's like, it's like looking at like, okay, here. It's like looking at like this or something, right? And you're like, okay, right? It's just so bad. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, jeez. You don't even want to analyze it. It's just objectively terrible decisions. Okay, so TL is now just split pushing. And CLG has no answer to this, by the way. And this is one of the problems that CLG's team composition has, is that they're too immobile to answer to it. The Galio is just such a nuisance. TL should actually just be utilizing 113. Uh, they shouldn't be doing 131. 131 isn't as strong as 113 with the Galio because it opened up the ability to actually just threaten to dive onto Darshan. Uh, Mountain Drake's up now, so they're going to close back or they're going to fall back and capitalize on just getting that. And they don't actually want to take the Drake. What?
they can dance for a little bit, and this actually lets Impact get a little bit more control. But, like, see, the, these fights are just so unnecessary. Like, the, the fact that they're getting so close to breaking out. Now you have x Smithy down in bottom lane, he shoves out the wave. Now she just actually go over to the dragon, capitalize, and kill the dragon. Bring all the members from TL down, pull it out. Yep, second Mountain Drake. Elder's gonna be spawning. All they have to do is wait for the Baron. So all that TL needs to do right now is they can 3-1-1 or, well, they can 3-1-1 with Galio in middle lane so that he has the ultimate available for his team. Push up the lanes. So you have the three, you have the one, you have the one. And then you just control all the vision inside of here with pink wards and control wards. You make sure that the lanes are always shoved up, Camille shoves into bottom, okay? You don't need to get this turret. Eventually Baron comes up, you fall back through here, Camille stays in bottom, you have four people controlling the entrance to the river. You have a Varus and a Jax. You're able to shred through that Baron ridiculously quick, not even factoring in the fact that, you know, uh, you, you have Paul Belter with AP and Leandre's Torment. Okay, you can get this Baron so quickly. They come in, you teleport Camille, or you just do a little bit of a dance and you let Camille continuously just walk up. You even have an option that uh, you can have Camille go into mid lane depending on like the state of the mid waves, not at this exact point, but when Baron's on the field. And then maybe Camille can actually just push in mid and maybe threaten the uh, the tier two and then Nar follows her and then Camille can actually just get a flank that way because otherwise it's gonna be pretty unrealistic to assume that you can get a flank. And this is what I mean. See this? You can just do this over and over and over. And they could have been doing it so much sooner. Now they're going to get the inhibitor. No, they're not going to get the inhibitor. Zoe was going to be there. And, you know, even even with... I mean, they did have a lot of counterplay potential with the 0 0.25 seconds. Um, they, they still were respecting Zoe. And so they, they backed off. They got the Baron. And now it's very easy to thread the needle. All that you have to do now is 3-1-1, one, one, one more time. Or you can 1-1-3, one, one, and you can put the 3 in bottom lane because it's an open, exposed inhibitor, and Galio is able to provide a lot of pressure that way. But instead, it actually looks like they're going to put Camille in bottom. So they're not, this is very KT-esque, how they're trying to penetrate. Okay. So impact got it. Now just rotate impact up into mid with you guys, get the inhibitor. And that should pretty much be it. Infernal, or Elder Dragon is coming up now. All that you have to do is not fight. Or you had to just not be in a position to fight. Why are we, like... Why are they recalling right here? What is going on? You would never do that in a million years. Impact running for his life. Poe Belter comes in. It doesn't look like it's actually going to matter that much anyway. It's just like, it's so thin. You know, if just something just went slightly wrong, there's no reason to let it happen. Just back up a little bit more and it can never happen. You increase... Or you decrease the percentage chance that the opponents have to have something go their way. And so now TL, off of those four kills, they're just going to be able to push into mid. So TL, I mean, okay, we're talking about CLG here. So 
Um, if there's a team that can rival the Golden Guardians right now, it's CLG. Uh, so, Team Liquid, th this is like watching... Okay, actually, as a comparison, this is like KT versus MVP. That, that's basically what's going on here. Um, TL mismanaged a lot of macro. Pound for pound and muscle wise, they were just so much stronger than their opposition. This was what I was very vocal about in week one and two. And just from having watched this game, I still feel the same exact way that they're just much stronger than the, the opposition. And I think that it, even if they end up making mistakes, it doesn't matter because they can wiggle their way out of it because they're superior players. And so because they never get truly punished for that, I think that the mistakes will continuously keep being made and they're not going to be forced to have to refine upon them because there's so much more that TL could have done to hurt CLG at certain points. There was so many needless fights. The, 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 the mid to late transition part of this game was so, so, so poor. Um, also, MVP of the game, X Smithy, 0% kill participation. Absolutely fantastic. That's one for the fantasy, the, the fantasy esports. So that's pretty much it.